Today, I'm announcing several initial steps my administration is taking to curb this epidemic of gun violence. On April 8th, President Biden announced a handful of executive actions meant to curb gun violence following shootings in Atlanta and Boulder. At the top of the list was a proposal to stop the proliferation of so-called ghost guns. These are guns that are homemade, built from a kit. Ghost guns or unregistered firearms that weren't assembled by licensed gun manufacturers or sold in highly regulated gun shops are most closely associated with this man. Cody Wilson, founder of Defense Distributed and creator of The Liberator, a 3D printed plastic gun that captured the public imagination. 3D printed guns wouldn't have serial numbers because they could be made entirely out of plastic. They could bypass metal detectors. Defense Distributed's signature product is the Ghost Gunner, a do-it-yourself gun milling machine the size of a small printer that enables anyone with enough time and interest to create unregistered firearms simply by purchasing parts online, downloading specs from an online library like Wilson's DefCAD and assembling the final product. Wilson says the units fly off the shelves every time a major politician so much as mentions gun control. As soon as Biden says, hey, you know, in 30 days, you're going to lose your ghost guns, everyone's like, I got to buy a ghost gun. You know, at, at some of our sites, we sold out, you know, like 25, 30 items, you know, like instantly. Wilson is back at the helm of defense distributed after stepping away in 2018 when he was arrested for allegedly paying for sex with a 16-year-old who may have misrepresented her age. The legal age for consent in Texas is 17. Wilson pled guilty to a lesser charge and is on probation. He's also had to register as a sex offender and agree not to purchase new firearms. Every firearm that I own, I, I'm able to continue to own. So it's kind of a legal gray area, actually, which, you know, are the types of things I'm most comfortable with. How easy or difficult, you know, has it been to jump back into this role? I never truly left the company, but to be the public head of this company is to face like a lot of scrutiny. And that wasn't appropriate while I was under indictment. But after the indictment was over, there was really no legal difficulty anymore. And the county and the state were cool. So I didn't feel like it was fair to have anyone else face the the difficulty and the scrutiny of running this company. Defense Distributed has been fighting off federal and state legal challenges since its founding in 2012. Biden's requested rule change is the latest front in that legal battle. The president was vague on the details, but he has asked the Department of Justice to issue a new rule on ghost guns within 30 days. Wilson anticipates that the proposed regulation will classify more gun parts, such as the lower receiver that the ghost gunner modifies, as firearms that would each require registration numbers branded on them. That was the rule change proposed by the nonprofit gun control advocacy organization Every Town for Gun Safety, which was founded by Michael Bloomberg. They think if they add more components and define more things as firearms that require serial numbers, that means more background checks, that means less DIY. Unfortunately, I believe it means more 80% receivers, more DIY. Why is that, that it would have the counterintuitive effect? Well, I think we're all good libertarians here, right? We recognize people who actually respond to incentives. And so if it's actually more difficult to buy an AR, uh, an AR upper receiver, like from PSA, because it's serialized, and now I got to go through the, through the background check and everything, I'm now going to consider for the first time making an AR upper receiver. And while Wilson was a pioneer in the DIY gun space, Defense Distributed is now just one of many players, meaning regulating ghost guns will be more of a challenge. Just in the last year, we've seen an amazing development of popular 3D printed kits, which include Glock slides, printed SMG, the uh, incredible hybrid and, and mostly 3D printed gun concepts, which were far beyond like what we were doing uh, just a few years ago. This community of people is not limited by the law. Defense Distributed, Ghost Gunner, we, we always kind of build our igloo with the building blocks of the law. This other group of kids, they've decided, well, actually, we don't, we don't respect the law at all. And they freely, illegally, sure, but freely share and advance this stuff even faster because of the opposition that companies like mine encountered uh, leading up to even 2018. So mm. again, another example of an acceleration of what's an obvious technical endeavor. If you have the right kind of machine in your garage, a raw block of aluminum is readily convertible into a firearm receiver. I think the interesting thing with these sorts of laws is there's this sort of growing gap between the what's on paper and what is enforceable in law. Kareem Shaya is a software engineer and co-founder of Open Source Defense, a gun rights organization mostly made up of engineers and Silicon Valley programmers seeking to distance the debate over the right to armed self-defense from the left-right culture war. If you look at the 
path gun rights have taken over the past five years. Really, that is the story of gun rights moving from a world of politics to a world of culture. In 2020, between 7 and 15% of the people who are gun owners today in the U.S. became gun owners in 2020. And the fastest growing segments within that were Black people and women. The way any network grows is kind of as a function of how active the nodes in a network are. So as people join, if they are eager about getting more people to join, that compounds really quickly. And so the more it gets away from politics, the faster it's going to keep getting away from politics and going to this place of just building a culture that everyone can be part of. In the tumultuous year of a pandemic, mass protests, riots, and a contested election, gun sales spiked across America and especially in big cities. The Firearm Industry Trade Association says that more than 5 million registered gun sales in the first seven months of 2020 were to first-time buyers. As people learn about guns, they tend to be cool with them. I think arguably YouTube and Twitter and Instagram are the biggest advances for gun rights of the past several decades, at least. And actually, like, arguably more important than any actual gun technology in terms of spreading gun rights. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic, and it's an international embarrassment. In the COVID era, the Biden White House is framing gun violence as a public health issue. But Wilson believes the career bureaucrats at the ATFE have long had these regulations ready to go, and we're just waiting for a president to enact them. Joe was simply able to take advantage of what the ATF was already preparing and ready to do and kind of wanted to do for the last four years. So this might feel like a kind of warp drive or acceleration of the problem. But in fact, it's, it's simply the problem of not being able to replace the permanent government and bureaucracy that's installed in D.C. So Biden doesn't have, I think, unique ideas. He's simply lent uh, an agency which is willing and waiting to a more robust activist center, you know, funded by Bloomberg. Uh, more installed in the government, like uh, Senator Mark Kelly brought the Giffords desk to the Senate. Uh, and Menendez, a New Jersey delegation, Connecticut, et cetera, they have open lines uh, to the executive now. They're, they're going to constantly be asking the ATF to, to shop in uh, their wish list. Um, if there's a real Republican Party, that's a big if. Um, surely they can stop a lot of it legislatively. But, you know, this is the problem of, of a permanent executive staff. And, and we'll always be having to watch these rules. The old idea of how gun laws worked was this idea that safety comes from this central authority. What the internet has changed is, well, rather than having a centralized model about who gets to be safe and how, each person has a right to determine how they are going to be safe. In other words, if someone is trying to hurt you, you have the right to stop them. And that's pretty uncontroversial if you kind of think about it that way. And so if you have the right to stop them, you, you have the right to the tools to do that. Biden is also proposing to ban pistol braces and push for more red flag laws that would allow police to confiscate someone's firearms based on reports of erratic behavior from acquaintances. But Wilson says he isn't particularly worried about the effect that these rules will have on his business or on gun rights in America. Your general attitude every time I've talked to you regarding that question has been to say more or less that the technology simply outpaces the speed at which the regulators can react. Do you still feel that way or have they now started to catch up? In important ways, regulators and attorneys general have caught up. I mean, they can define the problem in, in the terms we specifically began with five, six years ago, but that doesn't mean that they can accomplish meaningful regulation of it. It's kind of like, you know, they're using the law as like a talisman, as a kind of magical thinking, like no one can really understand what you're doing with your computer, where you're getting this information on the internet. Everybody knows that. It's like the file sharing wars of the 2000s. To this day, you can pirate and share anything you want online. Everyone knows that. So probably to meaningfully challenge what we're doing right now, there needs to be an act of Congress. I don't see that happening in the next couple of years. 